As you analyzed the oral arguments, you focused in on a piece that uh, folks can find at johnlock.org on several comments and questions by several of the justices. One of them, let's start with Anthony Kennedy. First of all, why is it that so many analysts, John, believe that Justice Kennedy is going to decide this case, that he's the swing vote? Well, I think mostly everybody's assuming that because that happens so often in these kinds of civil rights cases. Yet there's a liberal wing on the court for members who almost always vote um, in favor of whatever kind of extension of civil rights is under review, whereas there's a conservative wing who are, tend to be strict constructionists and they only up, up, uh, uphold civil rights if there's actual textual, uh, a textual basis for them. Kennedy tends to swing one way or the other depending on what the issue is. Um, that's why everybody's looking at him as the swing vote in this case, and that's why everybody was trying to read very carefully and parse exactly what he had to say when he was asking questions and making comments. You write about the fact that Justice Kennedy and also Justice uh, Alito talked in oral argument about a double standard with regard to this Colorado um, Civil Rights Commission. What was really the essence of, of their comments? For my money, that was the most interesting part of the entire um, oral argument. Uh, Justice Kennedy started off by suggesting that it wasn't at all clear based on the evidence that this Colorado Civil Rights Commission was really unbiased. It looked, it looked to him as though there might be some anti-Christian bias by at least one member of the commission. Alito explained um, what that, what he was specifically referring to, which was the fact that several times before there had been cases in Colorado where um, individuals had asked bakers to make cakes that said things that were specifically opposed to same-sex marriages. They would, for example, or, or opposed even to homosexuality. They would quote for it, there were biblical passages that they asked them to put on cakes um, that stated that uh, certain acts are abomination and so on. The bakers in those cases refused to make those cakes because they said those messages were offensive. And when this got to the Colorado Civil Rights Commission, the commission said it was all right. The bakers didn't have to say those things. What Justice Alito pointed out was that there's a double standard if you say that pro-gay marriage or pro-same-sex marriage bakers are free to refuse to make cakes that have anti-same-sex marriage messages, but a anti-gay marriage baker is not free to refuse to make a cake with a pro-same-sex marriage message. And he pointed out that when this came up before, one of the, before the commission, one of the commissioners said that um, using religion to refuse to do things for um, gay customers um, was, uh, I can't remember the exact phrase, but he said it was an abomination or abominable use of rhetoric. So there was there were definite, si definite indications that people on the commission were predisposed to favor one side versus the other in this, in this dispute. So unequal justice, essentially, unequal rules, and that, that was what was being kind of focused on uh, as uh, a possible issue or problem for this yes, case. Yes, Donna, but not just unequal, but the, the, the worst part was uh, hostility towards religion. And uh, what was interesting to me was that all of the justices then got into it and they really hammered the lawyer who was representing um, the Colorado Civil Rights Commission because they all seemed to feel that the state of Colorado hadn't taken, done enough to respect religious views and to make accommodation for them.